Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on the solubility of ionic solids. We're going to talk about general solubility rules for common salts, how to calculate the equilibrium conditions for slightly soluble salts, and we'll talk about something called the common ion effect. As a general rule, uh, the solubility of metal salts can vary widely, even for compounds which look similar. So for example, silver chloride has a very low solubility, but silver uh, chlor perchlorate has a very high solubility. As a general rule of thumb, uh, we say that if a solubility of a salt is less than about 0.1 grams per liter, we call that an insoluble salt, and if the solubility is greater than about 10 grams per liter, then that's a soluble salt. Everything else in between is a slightly soluble salt. So as a general rule, all salts containing the nitrate anion, the chlorate anion, or the sodium cation are soluble. There are a uh, few, if any, uh, exceptions to this rule, and so those are pretty good rules. Um, if you have a nitrate salt or a sodium salt or a chlorate salt, it's going to be soluble in aqueous solution. Most salts containing the following ions are also soluble, but not all. There are exceptions. Uh, the anions are acetate, perchlorate, chloride, bromide, iodide, sulfate. Uh, the cations uh, that'll make most salts soluble are potassium and ammonium. So again, there are exceptions, but as a general rule, that's pretty, pretty reliable. There are also anions that make uh, most salts insoluble. They are hydroxide, phosphate, sulfite, sulfide, and uh, carbonate. Now, of course, if you have uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, rule number one takes over, and that's a soluble salt. So there are exceptions to the insoluble rule. But uh, when you combine hydroxide, for example, with most metals like aluminum and magnesium and calcium, you get insoluble salts. So let's see how the details of calculating the, sol the solubility equilibrium work. And uh, as an example, we will calculate the solubility of silver chloride in aqueous solution. We do this in a way that's completely analogous to the way that we treated acids, except for the thing on the left-hand side is almost always a solid, and that has unit thermodynamic activity and doesn't appear explicitly in the expression for KSP. On the right-hand side, side, for every little bit of um, uh, for every small concentration that of AgCl that dissolves, we will get x moles per liter of silver ion and x moles per liter of chloride ion, where we do not yet know the value of x. We know that the Ksp must be 1.6 times 10 to minus 10, and this is the product of the silver and chloride ion concentrations, which in this case is x squared. And so we can solve this equation to find that x is 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5, which is the solubility of silver chloride in moles per Per liter. A more complicated example is calcium fluoride, where now for every um, uh, small amount of calcium fluoride that dissolves in aqueous solution, we will get x moles per liter of calcium and now 2x moles per liter of fluoride, uh, because there's a 2 to 1 complex. The KSP expression is the calcium ion concentration times the square of the fluoride ion concentration, and that must be equal to 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11. Plugging in our equilibrium expressions x and 2x for the ionic concentrations, we get uh, a cubic equation, and we can solve that easily to find that x is 2.14 times 10 to the minus 4, and that is the uh, solubility of calcium fluoride in moles per liter. Now notice that the coefficient 2 actually appeared twice in the expression. Once as the exponent in the expression for Ksp, and once uh, because the fluoride ion concentration is twice the calcium concentration in this particular example. If we had another source of fluoride, then we would uh, write something different. But in this simple example of uh, solubility, um, the, the two appeared twice. So now we're going to talk about the common ion effect, and that's where 
uh, two different salts interact with each other to limit the solubility of each other if they have a common ion. So for example, copper chloride has a KSP value of 10 to the minus 6, and its normal solubility in aqueous solution is 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. We can do, determine that in exactly the same way that we did silver chloride a minute ago. The solubility in 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution, however, is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter, which is about 1% of the normal value. And that's because sodium chloride and copper chloride have a common ion, which is the chloride ion. So how does this work in detail? We can um, assume that for sodium chloride, because it's a, a soluble salt, that uh, this dissolves completely and we get 0.1 molar, moles per liter of chloride ion. We also get 0.1 moles per liter of sodium, but that doesn't actually do anything in this example. For the copper chloride, we can write the usual balanced equation, and we can write the copper ion concentration as x, and the chloride ion concentration is now 0.1 plus x, the 0.1 from the sodium chloride contribution and the x from the copper chloride uh, contribution. And so now we write up, uh, write the KSP expression as the product of the two ion concentrations, and we get a quadratic equation which we then solve uh, for x, and that turns out to be uh, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 5, which is equal to the copper ion concentration and therefore is equal to the solubility of copper chloride in 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution. Note that 99.99% of the chloride comes from the sodium chloride uh, and only a tiny amount from the copper chloride which has its solubility reduced to about 1% of the normal point, uh, 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. A slightly more complicated example is silver chromate dissolved in 0.25 molar potassium chromate. Potassium chromate is a soluble salt and so we get the whole uh, 0.25 moles per liter of chromate ion um, and that will be the common ion with silver chromate. And so now the KSP for silver, silver chromate is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 12 and so we write out the expression for dissolving silver chromate. We get two silver ions for every mole of uh, silver uh, chromate and we get uh, for the concentration of chromate ion 0.25 plus x. Again we set up the KSP expression in the usual way remembering to square the silver ion concentration and we get that 1.9 times 10 to the minus 12 must be equal to 2x quantity squared times 0.25 plus x. Now at first this looks like a pretty nasty cubic equation but what we should recognize is that uh, x is likely to be a small value and so when added to 0.25 uh, is in fact negligible. And if we ignore this one term in x, then we get a fairly easy quadratic equation to solve, and we can find that x is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 6, which is indeed small compared with 0.25. And so the solubility of silver chromate in this quarter molar potassium chromate solution is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 6, which is um, only about 2% of the normal solubility in aqueous solution of 7.8 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter. So next time we will talk about the effect of pH on solubility of um, metal salts and we'll talk about uh, selective precipitation of metals and the formation of complex ions.